I'm going to show you how to create exit slips or formative assessments using an AI tool in less than a minute. So the AI tool is called Question Well. Now I'm going to explain this step by step. Once you see it, you'll see how it can only take maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute tops. So questionwell.org is a place where you can grab any text from the internet. You can grab um, short stories, articles, newspaper articles, uh, magazine articles, um, paragraphs, different things like that. You can plug it into the tool and it will create questions based on the text that you put in. You can also grab transcriptions from YouTube videos or other videos if they have the text and the transcript. And it's a great way to just see where your students are at when they leave the classroom or when they come in the next day to see if they retain some of the information that you used uh, that you went through the day before. So the first thing you'll need to do is sign up for an account. So you just click on try it out. And depending on your email, it's going to ask you to sign in with Google. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click sign in with Google and you've seen my email address before. So I'll type it in there and it'll say, hey, we want access to all these things. You can read through this. I've done this a lot. So I'll just click OK there. I'll click on continue. Uh, the beautiful thing is this was actually created by an educator, a teacher, um, Harvard uh, education school attendee. So you can see here, I can type in my top topic, subject and grade. And then this is where I would actually put in my text that I want to create this mini assessment or this exit slip from. So I'm just going to go to an article here on Edutopia about um, student choice and voice. So I'm just going to go down here and grab the text from this article. Notice that I went over the ad. I'm going to get all the bullet points, go through here, hit copy, come back over to question well. Now the free version, you only have a thousand tokens and each token is a word. So it's probably not going to pull all of the text. Uh, if I wanted to upgrade uh, to the paid plan, this is a freemium product. There's a bunch of free stuff that you can get. But then if you pay the uh, premium price, which is $7 a month per teacher, it's about $84 to $84 a year, then you would have access to get way more uh, than that. You can get 5,000 um, tokens. So here I'm just going to call this um, choice and voice. And I've got that there. All of this would be set up by you and you probably already know you don't have to have this, but then you can put in the learning objective or a standard, right? So if you're actually going to a specific standard, an ELA standard or a math standard or a history standard, you could put that in there. And the language I'm gonna have in English, you can see that will go in other languages. So it's a great tool if you have multi-language learners or ELL students or uh, English language learners. So in the upgrade, you'll get other types of questions uh, based on the prompt that you put in or the text that you put in. The free version is just multiple choice. So I know that's DOK level one, maybe two, depending on how well the question is asked. That's a whole other conversation for another day. But when you click on generate set, what it's going to do is the AI is running in the background. It's going to pull that text and it's going to create about 20 questions based on the text that you imported or copied and pasted into uh, question well. So as this is going through, you'll see that it's going to spit out a bunch of different pieces of information. So on the left side, we have the um, learning objectives. You can filter by question type. You can have essential questions. You can export these, which I'm super excited to show you. We'll go through that in just a second. But over on the right, you have all of your questions. And the great thing about these questions is you can actually verify them on Google search. So you can check Google to see the answers of these. So the first question, right, and I'm not going to go through every single question, but I just want to show you on the first question. Why is it important to allow students to select their own reading materials? Where well, it's going to give you, you know, A, B, C, and D on all of the questions to enhance uh, students. And that's the right answer, the one that's bold there. You can see it on the screen. And the search, when I click on check with Google search, it's going to open a new window and it's going to pull this information straight from here. Right. And, and you'll see that that question is answered in three different sources, right? Western Michigan University, Scholastic. And so it's going to pull the sources of information here. Now it didn't pull up the Edutopia article, but the great part is, is you're going to be able to get answers here to back up your question. So if I go back to question, well, you can see that I've got a bunch of different questions here. I can select all of them 
and export them, or I could break it up into chunks. It's going to give us probably 20 questions, if I remember, 19 questions. Um, and so I could break this up under different groups, different types of questions if I wanted, depending on how much input I want to put in on the front end, uh, what that looks like. But I'm just going to select all of them. And if there was one that I found that was maybe not correct or I didn't really want to put that in my mini assessment, I would click the flag. Now, if I'm doing this as an exit ticket, I would not do more than four or five. This is something I want to do the last minute of class or as a bell ringer when they come in or something to get their juices flowing when they come into class. So this is not something that I would do for a full on assessment, right? Like a summative assessment. This is just quick, formative. How are they doing? How are they understanding? I don't need to explain that to you, but I just some people don't know. So I want to put that out there. So then we come over to export, and this is the beautiful thing, you saw this on the home page, right? Is when I click on export, um, I can export it to quizzes as an Excel file, Kahoot as an Excel file, I can go straight into Canvas as a QTI file, uh, I can go to GimKit as a CSV, Blookit as a CSV, you can see all the things here, it goes into Moodle, Google Forms, Quizlet, Microsoft Forms. So the beautiful thing is you can actually take this information and put it into something that's a little bit more meaningful, right? Maybe it's a review for an assessment. Maybe you read a short story or you're done with a chapter in a short story and it's something that you wanna review um, altogether. That's an option. The other really cool thing about this is it saves your sets. So when I click on uh, export, uh, I'm gonna save sets and it automatically saves this. So you can see on this account, I only have one of those kind of mini assessments created. But in your account, you could create 30 or 40 of these and go grab individual questions, right? Again, the DOK level is not three, four level. It's one, two, depending on the question. So you would want to add some other examples. But if you get the paid version, you can get some short answer stuff in here and it will analyze the text for you. Um, so you can click on pricing. It'll show you the pricing here, what you get between the free plan and the paid plan. Again, I am not getting paid by anybody at um, QuestionWell. It was just a tool that I found and I absolutely loved it, sharing it with my teachers. Um, as a principal, I just think it's an awesome tool to create things really, really quickly. Uh, you can also read the about page. Uh, basically, it just takes you to the home page. Her email is just her Gmail, right? So I think that she's a graduate student. You can look her up on uh, LinkedIn. She's a graduate student at Harvard uh, in the education department, former teacher. And maybe she's a current teacher too, I don't know. But this tool and others like it are going to save teachers so much time, so much frustration, so much energy because they can just create these quick little mini assessments. Um, the last thing you saw up here, right, is feedback. So you can give her feedback. And then obviously the privacy policy. If it's something that you were looking to purchase, obviously you'd want to talk to your administration, see if they can do that for the whole school, get a school rate or a group rate or something like that. I'm assuming that she would probably do that. Um, again, I'm not speaking for her. Um, but this actually goes through all of the processes of what she went into when creating this. So I love the idea and the thought process of the input, the learning object objectives and essential questions, the question selection, it kind of just walks you through everything that you would need to do. If you're here, it's most likely because you're an educator. I hope to bring you more of these tools that you can lose and use in the classroom. I know that some of them are blocked um, across the country. I've been hearing about them, but it's something that you could do on your home computer and send in something on your phone that you could just quickly throw into your classroom or your GIM kit uh, or Blookit or something like that. But if you're here again, it's most likely because you're an educator. I appreciate what you do for kids on a daily basis. I love you. I hope you have a fantastic school year. Thank you for stopping by.